good morning class and in today's lecture uh, we will continue our discussion on solar cells and particularly we will discuss solar cell efficiency so in the previous class we were discussing the electrical properties of a solar cell and we uh, discussed about the maximum power point and saw how solar cells are generally considered as operating at as nearly constant current sources so at the beginning in the initial operation point the solar cell current is dominated by light current which basically depends only on the amount of solar radiation that is incident on its uh, pn junction diode region and only in the later section as the external voltage increases a lot you will see a decrease in the current up to the point where the current drops to the open circuit voltage and we have a, a maximum power point which gives the maximum power that the solar cell can deliver as the v at the maximum power and i at the maximum power we also discuss the idea of a fill factor where uh, we uh, idealize the solar cell power voltage curve as a rectangle as an idealized constant current source and compared that area of this rectangle which is the idealized power that you can get which is the open circuit voltage into the short circuit current and at the numerator we have the actual maximum power that we are getting which is the given by the area under this red etched rectangle so the we all, uh, and the fill factor was around 0.8 for uh, good quality solar cells and for uh, medium quality solar cells it can go down to 0.4 to 0.7 now uh, a solar cell also uh, the uh, power that is uh, delivered by a solar cell also depends on the temperature of the cell at which it is operating so what is seen here is that as the temperature operating temperature of the solar cell decreases the maximum power point is also decreasing so here these are plots of an actual solar cell operation Uh, at different operating temperatures so one in one case the operating temperature is 0 degree centigrade second case is 25 degree centigrade third case is 50 degree centigrade and fourth case is 75 degree centigrade and this is the power uh, generated by that cell in watts and the voltage v in volts and you can see the peak power is decreasing significantly from from around 5 watts at 0 degree centigrade to around 3.5 watts at 75 degree centigrade and this is happening primarily because if you can see in the current voltage curve that the open circuit voltage is falling rapidly with temperature so at 0 degree centigrade the open circuit voltage was around 0.7 volts at 25 degree centigrade it's gone down to around 0.6 volts at 50 degrees it is 5.5 volts and at 75 degree centigrade it has dropped to 0.5 volts and because of this the uh, current to voltage curve also shifts and uh, declines quickly uh, at uh, lower voltages and hence the maximum power point which is given by the uh, uh, multiplication of the current and the voltage is also declining now why does this happen so uh, if you look back into how this system is operating so if you see uh, the band gap across your np or pn junction what we discussed is when solar light is falling in this space charge region electrons are being promoted here and holes are being produced here and these holes are moving to the right to the p section and the electrons here are moving to the left which is the n section and that is generating the current of electrons from n side to the p side or you can think of the uh, uh, flow of positive current from p side to the n side now the electrons that are located here and the holes that are located here cannot go to the opposite side directly because there isn't enough energy to do that okay however as the voltage increases as the external voltage increases that external voltage gradient acts against the internal space charge voltage gradient all right so eventually you reach a voltage at which there is enough energy in the electrons to move to jump direct from this side the n side lower uh, energy level of the conduction band to the p side higher energy level of the uh, of the conduction band using the external voltage gradient that is generated across the load so that is 
basically at that point the back current which is also called the diode dark current which we discussed a bit in the previous class as well overwhelms the light current that is moving in the opposite direction so the light current is moving the electrons this way and the diode dark current is moving the electrons this way and the actual current uh, is a uh, the difference between these two primarily okay so now if the external voltage is high enough the diode dark current the energy given by the external voltage is sufficient for the electrons to jump from n side to p side directly without having go, ha having to go through the external wires at that point the light current is uh, and the dark current balance and you do not get any electricity out of the system similarly the energy is high enough for the holes to jump from the upper level here to the lower level here remember that holes uh, require energy to go down whereas electrons require energy to go up because they are oppositely charged okay so now think of what happens when the temperature is rising when the temperature is rising electrons have thermal energy along with the external voltage energy so quite naturally the voltage at which the electrons have enough energy thermal plus external voltage gradient to jump from the n side to p side directly is lower as a result your open circuit voltage falls because open circuit voltage is the value of the voltage at which electrons have enough energy so that the reverse flow balances the light current flow and there is no net transfer of charge electricity through the system so what this means is clearly as the temperature rises your open circuit voltage of a solar cell will fall and hence the power delivered will also decrease hence it is always better for solar cells to operate at low temperatures because it is the sunlight which is driving the current and not thermal energy which is causing a reverse flow and is obstructing the light current from flowing so this is why it is very important in solar cells to have proper cooling technologies because if you think of a solar cell that is directly heat uh, uh, directly oriented to the sun on a hot day the external temperature can go to 30 40 degrees and as the sunlight is falling on the solar cell part of that light is converting into thermal energy as well and we will discuss this point also and so the solar cells are getting heated so temperature of the solar cell can well rise above 50 degrees or 60 degrees which will decrease its uh, its maximum power point and hence the power delivered is also going to suffer so cooling strategies for solar cells is an important engineering uh, uh, important part of the engineering system so that the solar cells remain cold enough to operate at its at the maximum possible power it can deliver and it does not overheat uh, in typical solar cells, the change in the maximum power point with temperature is given by this expression. So, 1 by P maximum power point dm dp dt for at the maximum power point point, this one is declining at minus 0 0.0045 per degree centigrade. Okay. So, this kind of gives you the gradient of this slope, of this maximum power point, how it changes with temperature. So next up, we will discuss this idea of a solar cell efficiency in a little bit more detail. So uh, let us uh, quickly look back at the, uh, the solar light radiation that we discussed before uh, we discussed all of these uh, things about solar systems. This one. This is the spectrum of solar radiation on Earth. Okay. So you can see that the solar radiation is coming to earth on a on a large range of wavelengths starting from around 250 nanometers which is the ultraviolet range to around 2000 nanometers of wavelength which is the infrared rate. The visible range is starting from around 700 uh, nanometers to around 350 nanometers or something like that. Okay. So this is uh, this is the blue zone this is the red zone and this is the green zone okay yellow green zone so this side is red light this side is blue light this side is yellow green light now each of these 
uh, wavelengths will have its own photon energy. See, the energy of a photon of a certain wavelength is given by h into c by lambda, okay, where lambda is, is the wavelength in meters. So, here uh, we are looking at nanometers, so 10 to the power minus 9 meters. So, when we are saying say 500 nanometers, it means the wavelength is 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 meters. This you put here, the velocity of light you know, the Planck constant is given. So, that will give you the energy of the photon. So, this is the, so suppose your semiconductor is absorbing a photon of this 500 nanometer wavelength. So, the maximum energy it will gain is this value h into c by 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 meters. So, whatever that energy is, that energy has to be sufficient for the electron to jump from the valence band to the conduction band within the space charge region. If that energy is sufficient, then the electron will be jumping. Okay. But note the energy is varying. So, for example, if you decrease the wavelength, the lambda is decreasing. So, the energy is large. So, the energy values of photons in the ultraviolet zone is larger than that in the visible zone and is larger than in the infrared zone. Okay. So, the energy content of each individual photon is decreasing as you move from the uh, lower wavelengths to higher wavelengths. And what this means is some photons may be in the ultraviolet range or the uh, upper limits of the visible range may have energy that exceeds the band gap energy. So, yes, the electrons will be promoted and, and a part of that photon energy will be expended to promote that electron up. But also, there will be excess energy of the photon that is left over, which will be uh, trans uh, converted into heat energy. Okay. And in the far infrared zone, where wavelengths are say 1500 nanometers, 1250 nanometers, the energy of the photon may not be sufficient to, to cover the entire band gap energy and these photons cannot be absorbed by the uh, uh, absorbed in the uh, space charge region at all because no uh, the energy is not sufficient for the electron to be promoted and unless the energy is, is sufficient the electron cannot absorb that photon and get promoted at all so those photons cannot be used at all all right so what happens when a photon is hit is interacting with electron depends on the energy content of the photon and the actual uh, band gap energy that that particular semiconductor has and this give uh, takes us back to the losses all right so we will discuss the losses now so these are the two cases that we were discussing in the infrared zone where the photon energy is lower than the band gap energy. So, this is the band gap energy, this is your uh, conduction band and this is your valence band and the energy of the photon is too low to, uh, to move the electron from the valence band to the conduction band. So, what happens? The electron just makes a small jump and goes back. So, there is no actual absorption. The electron re-emits the photon back because it could not use the energy of the photon at all to get promoted. Then there is the other case when the uh, energy of the photon is actually greater than the band gap energy. So then this electron gets promoted to a high energy level in the uh, conduction band and then slowly this excited electron loses this energy in thermal emissions till it goes to the lowest available energy level in the conduction band. And this energy is being wasted and is converted to heat energy. Okay. So, this is called transmission loss because these photons are not actually getting uh, absorbed at all and here we have thermalizing loss because part of that energy of the photon is being converted into heat energy which is heating up your solar cell. Okay. So, here is your visible spectrum again. Okay. Remember this is your solar spectrum like this. Okay. Part of it is being absorbed by the atmosphere. So, those parts are not hitting the ground. Okay, if you remember part of it is being absorbed by the atmosphere. So, those things are not hitting the ground. So, these are the uh, wide gaps. And this is your uh, losses for a typical doped silicon solar cell. Okay, this is the ultraviolet region. Remember 600, 500, 700, this is your visible region. And then this is your infrared region. So, you can see 
from around uh, 1100 uh, wavelengths beyond 1100 nanometers in the far infrared region of the solar cell of the solar spectrum everything is transmission loss so the energy is not sufficient the photons energy is not sufficient so uh, the silly, uh, the semiconductor cannot absorb those photons to promote electrons so these are called transmission losses okay in this region the energy is sufficient however the energy is in excess so that excess energy is converted into thermalizing losses that is it is heating up the semiconductor then and is not being used to uh, uh, create uh, electrical energy so this yellow portion is the thermalizing losses and this green region is the usable portion that is being directly converted to electrical energy okay so what we see here is that the thermal losses is 31.7 percent of the total solar energy that is coming that is being incident on a typical solar cell on the ground okay transmission losses is 19.3 percent and the usable portion is 49 percent so more than half of the solar energy that is incident on your uh, solar cell is being wasted either as heat or in transmission losses because the energy is too low to actually excite an electron to the conduction band. So before any type of other losses coming into the picture, for a silicon solar cell, you are losing 50% of the solar energy into non-electrical or thermal losses or transmission losses. And we saw why this is happening. And this is happening primarily because solar energy is incident on a wide range of frequencies. And as a result, and you have a single band kind of gap with a certain specific energy. So excess energy, loss as heat, less energy, transmission losses. Okay. So with that idea, we will uh, start our discussion and try to quantify the efficiencies of a solar cell.